Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a feature implementation of beta processing soft system on DigiLine PingJet One board. Beta processing soft system has numerous features. However, I'm going to implement only three primary features of it. They are scaling, color space conversion, and frame rate conversion. As for introduction, the beta processing soft system is one of the Xilinx logical intellectual properties made from Bibado SLS. It is a collection of beta processing IP subcores bundled together in hardware and software abstracting the beta processing pipe. It provides the end user with an out of box ready to use beta processing core without having to learn about the underlying complexities. The beta processing subsystem enables streamlined integration of various processing blocks including scaling, deinterlacing, color space conversion and correction, chroma resampling and frame rate conversion. For more details, we can visit its product guide PZ023. This is the entire project IP block, which is designed under Vivado IP integrator. This design uses Zing processing system, so we need a software application to work. This is the chain of beta processing IPs. This is the beta test pattern generator IP. This becomes source of beta stream for beta processing subsystem. This generates various type of pattern which can later be processed through beta processing subsystem. Various pattern generation depends on the pattern type selection under its customization window. This is the beta processing subsystem IP. This project design is based on its three primary features that is scaling, color space conversion and frame rate conversion. It gets the video stream from test pattern generator and based on the user selection, it then generates corresponding feature output. This IP is customized in full-fledged functionality mode so that it will be able to generate all these three features from single IP core. This is the X4 stream subset converter IP. This IP is used for stream width conversion as it converts incoming beta stream from beta processing subsystem into 24-bit RGB beta stream. This is the beta timing controller IP. In this project design, this IP is customized in generator mode so that it generates the beta timing signal according to the output stream parameters of beta processing subsystem. This is the X4 stream to video out IP. This converts X4 stream into 24-bit parallel video data with synchronization signals. This is RGB to DVI encoder IP. This is used for SDMI interface as it receives parallel video signals and then encodes into TMDS signal. This signal is connected to SDMI TX port of this block design, which then goes all the way to SDMI output connector of ping board by constraint mapping. So by this way, the output is displayed on SDMI monitor. Finally, this is clocking wizard IP. It is customized in dynamic configuration mode, by which the desired output clock can be generated by programming to this IP. In this project design, this IP output clock provides pixel clock for PTC IP, access to BT out IP, and RGB DVI IP. In this way, the block design completes. We can now head for beta stream generation. We have to follow all the procedure for generating beta stream. If everything goes well, we will be able to generate a beta stream. And after that, we need to export the hardware design. And then we can head for software design. Beta stream generation and hardware export for this project design are already completed. We can launch the BITIS ID now. To launch Vitis ID, it also has some procedures such as selection of workspace directory, and after that Vitis ID can be launched. Then it opens initially welcome page. From this page we can create platform project or application project. In this project I have already completed creating platform project and application project. Now I can directly open software design. This is the platform project. And this is the application project. Both projects have been built already, but we can also rebuild the application project to make sure there is a no error in our project. 
Before launching the application, we have to make our board ready by connecting to this computer. We have to set this jumper setting in JTAG mode so that we can program this board from the computer. And again, we have to set this jumper setting in USB mode so that we can power this board by using same programming cable from computer. Now we connect cable to this mini USB port so that programming as well as powering board will be done by this board. Now we connect HDMI cable to output HDMI port of this board which then leads to output monitor. Now in a Vitis ID, we can also add a serial terminal so that we can monitor the messages and feature selection menus. The terminal is added to ID. Now we have to configure terminal setting and then the terminal is connected to our board. So now we can launch our project to the board. Bytes first programs the beta stream and then launches the application project. Project launch is successful. We are seeing the feature selection messages in the terminal. In the meantime, we are also seeing the output on the monitor. We can now select the feature option by entering keys. We enter one to select video test pattern option. It opens sub menu. We select this sub menu option, which displays list of test pattern. From this list, we can select any desired pattern. Now let's enter some other key value so that we see different test pattern output here. Now we enter value 2 to select the scaling option from the main menu. From this sub menu, we change input or output resolution. Here I have set the input resolution to 1920 by 1080 and output resolution to 800 by 600. So we are obtaining the output where input stream is scaled down to 600 resolution. This is the output obtained after changing the input resolution to 640 by 480 and output resolution to 1920 by 1080. And now we enter value 3 to convert color format between input and output stream. We can select first option to set input color format. We can choose any of them to set input color format. This is output obtained after setting input color format to YUV422 format. This is obtained after setting output color format YUV444. This output is obtained after setting input at RGB format and output at YV420 format.
Now we select fourth option from main menu to set the frame rate. Here we can select options to set input frame rate or output frame rate. So by selecting first option, it shows input frame rate list. We can select one of the options to set the input frame rate. Here we set the input frame rate at 30 Hz. Here we set the input frame rate at 100 Hz. Now we come to main menu to select the fifth option. By selecting this option, we can get various information about video processing subsystem. By selecting first option, it displays video processing subsystem input output stream configuration. By selecting second option, it displays video processing subsystem core information for the particular topology. By selecting third option, it displays video processing subsystem event log. By selecting fourth option, it displays video processing subsystem current status, such as scaling status, color space conversion status, and frame rate conversion status. So in the conclusion, video processing subsystem feature implementation completes in this way. However, video processing subsystem has many features, out of which I just implemented three basic features on Pinkboard. Thank you for watching.